I think you're having me on. <laughs> Hello, I'm Fern Brady, and this is What a Combo, the show about mad food combinations. If you've ever come home drunk from a night out and had a bowl of cornflakes with ketchup on it, then this is the show for you. Oh, also, if you're listening to the show, did you know that you can watch us over on YouTube? Uh, just head over to Twisted's page and you'll find us there. I mean, you could be watching us already, in which case, hello. So today's guest, if you combine an undying love for country music, a strong disdain for pretentious dining, and a wit sharper than a broken guitar string, all blended together with a wardrobe to die for, a stage presence that blows your socks off, and equal parts Irish cream and Irish charm, it's Seema! I'm so excited. I really loved that introduction, specifically where you talked about my wardrobe. So this is the most excited I've ever been about any interview because, like I was saying before we started, um, uh, probably the one of the number one. Well, I'm definitely in the top five CMAT fans in the UK. I just listened to one of your new singles, uh, like too many times. Which one? Uh. Stay f- Stay I know all the words yeah. and I know all the tune. Yeah. Probably I could play on guitar now. Yeah. <laughs> Stay Stay for something. Yeah. I listened to it four times on the way to my gig and four times on the way back. Uh I also had all of your last album as my pre show music. So I forced all my audiences to get into CMA. Yes, I know this because every single time you would have a gig, oh, I would get, no. <laughs> every single time you had a gig, I would have loads of girly pops message me to be <gasps> like, did you know that Fern Brady plays your entire album as a pre-show playlist? Like every single time I'd get so many messages from people in the crowd that generally were like Irish and were aware of me beforehand just being like did you know that she uses your entire album as <laughs> and I was like yes I do because yeah. every time I get lots of messages I love well, it I, as long as you didn't think that at 8.30 every night I was alone in the house listening to your music it was it was my pre-show I think that's fine as well it's a nice <laughs> intimate way of taking it in but it's all good let's do your snacking combo what have you brought me today <laughs> Well, I was supposed to bring you an almond. Although these aren't almonds. Are they? What are they? Why are they skinless? They smell and weird? like bums or something. <laughs> these are these are weird. What are I don't understand what are these? Smell them. They're really stinky. They're smoked almonds. What's going on? Those smoked almonds. Okay. With um Diet Coke. And it's weird because they're skinless. They look like um it's like when you see a testicle in the wild or something. Like, it's wrong. When they would you have... see a testicle in the wild? Um, festival season. <laughs> 2023. <laughs> in the Netherlands, um, people, men that go to festivals, they just go around naked a little bit. Oh, and really? Thought, yeah. A bit weird. Not into it. To be Aren't they have good bodies in the Netherlands? I wouldn't want to see it at a UK festival. I'm, you could have the best body in the world. I still don't want to see your testicles. Do you know what I mean? No, my old genitals look too much like um, bits of meat. Um, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen coddle? What is it? Is, it, is that an it's Irish an, food? It's an Irish stew with like boiled sausages instead of like, they're basically like normal sausages, but they're boiled in, in water instead of like fried. So they just look like men's genitals. We have it in, in Scotland. Water. It's called stovies. Mm. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's delicious. It's, it's really amazing. Food, but people get scared of it. Okay, I'm getting into these now, you know. It's okay. But generally speaking, the combination that I would have brought would have been a roasted salted almond with the skin on. Yeah. And Diet Coke. The two together for me are just absolutely fantastic. Now, where I got this from is I... am I tend to hyper fixate on things for a period of about three to six months. Mm -hmm. So like I'll find out about something or someone and I'll have to learn every single thing about them from the entire history of their life, right? This is a Joan Didion thing. I got really into Joan Didion this year. I'm reading all of her books in chronological order. (laughs) And I read an account of hers where she says, or someone else wrote about her, that she would wake up every single morning at 10 a.m., with her Celine big, thick rimmed, dark sunglasses already on her, she'd kind of saunter downstairs in this little decrepit way and she would drink like 
two cans of Diet Coke and salted almonds together. And that would be her breakfast every single day. She was definitely like a little bit neurodivergy, which I love. Um, <laughs> she's one of the neurodivergy girls. And um, she'd have the exact same thing every single day. That's and, classic. And it was salted almonds and Diet Coke. So I was like, oh, let me try it out. I became obsessed. But the difference is, right, she was quite... She was quite a picky eater. Yeah. The difference between me and her is I think she would eat maybe like a handful. Yeah. And I would eat the whole fucking bag. The right. whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. And they're actually extremely calorie dense, which is good because you can actually, if you eat a full bag of it, you can eat it for breakfast and you're good to yeah. go for quite a while. You're quite full and you're quite good to go for a while. I prefer the sugary ones that you get at Christmas markets. They're that are like lit. covered in sugar and cinnamon. They're lit. I'm really excited about your album coming out and I've been listening to that on a loop. Uh, but also, loads of your lyrics reference food. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've boasted before that you can eat anything and you're very proud that you can eat anything at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I have like the famine gene. I actually have that as well. Do you think you have Yeah, that? I'm 98% Irish, according to my DNA test. Mm. And I've got um, the thing that makes you more likely to put on fat. I've got that gene and one that helps me put on muscle. And I've got an Irish boyfriend and he says it's because I would have been a good sturdy woman on the farm. Mm. I mean, I don't need to do a test to figure out if I have the gene to put on my because I know that I do. <laughs> But I'm very happy to it do is, so. But it is, it's, it's, a of, thing. it's a memory of my ancestors, do you know what um, I mean? Well, think of your ancestors now before you turn this down. F*** that shit. I'm not a bit of it. Yeah, that I shit. agree. I think it's the worst food in the world ever. They're disgusting. I think they're gross. Uh, these are liquorous all sorts. They're, but see, the thing is with me is, even when I know that I don't like something, if there was nothing around left to eat, I'd go, oh, I'll have the pink one, though. And then I try and eat around, like, the mm-hmm. disgusting poo that is the licorice in the middle. Uh, this is how it always gets you. So you can actually eat this sort of fondant bit, mm-hmm. and then that bleeds through, and it just tastes vile. Yeah, Licorice is the worst substance on maybe the planet I don't understand when people agreed that this was like a suitable I'm gonna have a whiff now because I probably haven't smelled one in a while that's they're gross just, that's awful. gross it smells like it smells like petrol to me it smells like and you know there's people who don't like floral tasting things I'm actually I'm I'm into a little lavender Turkish cocktail. delight and I'm all into, that. yeah I'm fine with any of that I literally I can't think of another substance on the planet that I wouldn't put inside my mouth respectfully um but like licorice is rotten. But you know there's whole. And my granddad um, loves it. Like, and I'm like, Dick, what you on? Like, it's crazy. Is his name, his name Richard? Is, no, his name is Dick. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> I thought you were calling your granddad Dick. No, no, no. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't go by. He doesn't go by Richard. He's never gone by Richard. He's always been Dick. And you call him that? Yeah, Dick Flanagan. <laughs> that's so cool. That's I, such no, a cool I call him Grandad, but then I will refer to him as Dick Lanigan. A full, full title. Do you know there's loads of Scandinavian countries they all love licorice and all their sweets are uh, sorry, I say licorice instead of licorice, and all their sweets are infected with pieces of it, like their chocolate has it yeah. inside. It's horrible. I do know this because I used to live in Denmark. And what? I used to live in Denmark I'm for so like six jealous. Weeks. I didn't really enjoy my time living there because I found them to be a little bit conservative. And specifically, right. I started going over when I was 15 years old, right? And I was kind of like, chubby 15 year old, wore 10 layers of makeup and like dressed like Paddington Bear going to a rave or something at mm-hmm. all times. And people used to stare at me walking down the street because it's the opposite, right? They're like tall, tan, beautiful, blonde. They don't really they don't wear, wear makeup, makeup and they well. wear like oversized black clothing with like interesting silhouettes because they can pull it off because they're way like seven stone or something. Yeah. And then I would just kind of be like, hello, like kind of walk along the street. And I just felt like everyone used to stare at me and I would never, and I would always be asked about myself whenever I was like out in the club or the pub or something they'd be like what's going on with you in a very pointed manner of like why do you look like this I I found personally and it's interesting because now Denmark has become like a fashion capital and everyone's wearing like scarves around their head and weird clothes I'm like where was this where was this in 2014 may I ask because it was their time they do all wear like navy and uh, and striped t-shirts like this (laughs) So, before we get to your wild combo, we're going to play a quick game of 
Good combo, bad combo. So I'm going to say a combination of things and you're going to tell me if it's a good combo or a bad combo mm-hmm. and why. Pineapple and pizza. Yeah, I'm into it. So is Alison Spittle. I can do it. Um, our mutual friend, the comedian Alison Spittle. The wonderful comedian Alison Spittle, who I love so much. Uh, she's I've actually, when I've made pizza for her before, because I have a fancy pizza oven at my house, she's asked me to get her a little tin of pineapple. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> I know, it's the, bit, the best thing. Is it inside, it's, outside? It's an outdoor one. And I got it sent to me after I did, I mentioned a pizza oven on a program and it's so fancy. But then I when... love pizza ovens. I love pizza ovens. And I wish I also had a pizza oven like Fern Brady. Dublin and tourists. Yeah, it's fine. Someone needs to be there. People that are from Dublin can't afford to live there anymore. So like someone's <laughs> got to go. <laughs> uh, Jed words and good music. Yes, yes. 100%. Jack and Rose from Titanic. Yeah, why not? Uh, Seema and Janet Street Porter. No. <laughs> what happens? I just don't agree with her on anything she says ever. And mm. she says loads of things all of the time, constantly. And I'm always just like, I don't agree with any of this. <laughs> Do you know? Uh, a bad breakup and a good song. Oh, best combo of all time. Wow. Well, there's yeah. only one reason that people have horrible breakups and it's to write amazing songs about them. Yeah, that's your, that's your signature thing it's, to do. It's my thing. Um, <laughs> Miss Peggy and Style Inspiration. Extremely excellent combination. Can you explain that? Is she... She's my style icon, 100%. The thing with Miss Piggy is she's, ironically enough, the first plus-size queen (laughs) to have existed, right? It's like, you know, fat people weren't allowed anywhere near a television set until maybe five years ago or something. But previously, there was no one. And it was almost as if in the 70s and 80s, you know, when Miss Piggy would be styled... She was made so sexy and so glamorous and so seductive in an ironic way as if to say, ha, 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 she's a big, fat, ugly pig or whatever. But actually, she's successful in being glamorous and sexy. Like, Mm -hmm. I'd have sex with her, personally speaking. Like, I think she's hot. (laughs) Next up, it's your wild combo. And I've got some challenges for you to complete. But first, I've got to rate this uh, snacking combo. It's not my favourite. Only because these almonds smell like a butt. They Um, do. They do, but I found them weirdly. I found them weirdly. Yeah, you've worked your way through I've kind of eaten the whole ball. I give these smelly bum almonds zero out of five. But your combination and the reasons behind it, I give for oh, that's five out of five. It's amazing. Excellent. We're back, and it's wild combo time. But first, Seema. You're a great musician. Mm-hmm. You're very good at playing the guitar and singing at the same time. But have you ever dabbled in the carrot recorder? Oh, what? What is this? Uh, this is a yeah, recorder well, that um, our producer spent all day yesterday drilling into oh. and carving for us to play. Oh. Um <sighs> Baby, do- baby doesn't work. Whoever uh, made this, it's not. <laughs> oh, oh, it does work oh. if you do that. That's a bit. It's a bit embarrassing doing it that way. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> wow. Have you ever done one of those asthma tests? If you do it that way, maybe I, think I it'll have work. asthma. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, yeah, go as hard as you can, and it'll make a noise. <laughs> Oh, that's horrible. I'm going to pass out. I'm going to I pass actually, out. Yeah, I, I actually anymore. feel like actually... Um, my eyes are... <laughs> my eyes are going black. I feel like I did the American We've dream. also got a butternut squash kazoo, if you want to have a go on that. Uh, this looks like it has a better mouthpiece. <laughs> I actually feel high. So, <laughs> <laughs> this one I think might work. Do, do, do. Right. Do, do. <laughs> That's lovely. I mean, it does just seem like you're singing with a squash it pressed does against just your face. Like I'm singing with a squash pressed against my face. Maybe it... <laughs> oh, it's got my lipstick on it now as well. That's going to be so valuable one day. <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, I think you're having me on. <laughs> 
I think we should do your wild combo. I think I can guess what it is before I open it. <laughs> is it going to be a replica of a Chinese takeaway in Dublin? Am I right? Am I close? Whoa. This is your wild combo. You've brought it in for me. Let's lift the lids. Ah, oh, the shot glass! Yo! Is I this can't... a spice bag? This is a spice bag! Oh, oh my god! I can't believe I... you know what a spice bag is! No, it's weird. I can't remember if I've had one. Seema, can you explain what a spice bag is? So, a I can't spice bag. If I've had one is um i believe it to be an irish chinese delicacy which is you put chips and also mm. chicken into a bag and you fry it up with loads of spices and things and there's loads of veggies in it for my this is amazing in my opinion it's one of the finest things that money can buy oh yeah I now i do really. have some criticisms read the spice bag which is one it looks far too healthy which i knew it was going to be i knew it was going to be too healthy like these Chips look like they're fresh potatoes that are fabulous. And it should also look like it's about to give you dysentery. Now, the combination part of it, though, Fern, Mm -hmm. is this, which is golden syrup. No. Yeah. You got to do it. So it's gold. I like to, sometimes I like to pour, sometimes I like to dip, but I like a spice bag because it's so salty and just has a little bit of sweetness. And then you dip it in a bit of syrup. No. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. And then. No. Mm Mm-hmm. We've had um, we've had weird things on this show, but this, how did how did this end up happening? I think I know the answer. Um, when did you first try this? I tried this probably when I really got into. it, I used to work in a shop called Super Value in Fingless Village. I love I Super to, Value, and I used to eat probably <laughs> three of these a week. There was a Chinese that did like they're like Chinese honey sauce, and. One day I got the Chinese honey sauce from... It was BQ Inn in Fingless Village. It's my absolute, Mm. absolute, absolute favourite spice bag in the world. But they have like a a Chinese honey sauce. And I had it one day and I was like, that's f***ing golden syrup. Like, Mm. (laughs) it's just Lala's golden syrup. I was like, whoa, it's amazing. So then I just started getting like... I just wouldn't buy the Chinese honey sauce. I just have like a tin of golden syrup in my house. And I would use that as my my thing. I don't like sweet things with my dinner. So I'm only going to do this for you. Okay. I'm building up to it. So good though. I'm actually uh, so I might actually This try is it. this bit's amazing. Yeah, this bit is really good. Someone did a really good job of this <laughs> spice bag. Do it. This is really this is actually a really, really good spice bag. It's a bit healthy, and like I said, I have my two criticisms, but ultimately it's very good flavouring. We can't do it. No, I did I did have a bit of it. Mm-hmm. No, you don't drink it. Why are you drinking it? You I thought so. I was meant to drink it. No, no, no. <laughs> You're crazy. No. I'm not putting it on my... Well, because it's all going to get mixed up in my mouth right. anyway, like Take, a washing machine. Dip it, dip and chip in is what um, I would recommend, like that. And then, honestly, like I really am only doing this because it's you. Just do it. Just a little bit, not too much. Just, okay. Yeah, there you go. Maybe, maybe scrape it off a little bit. Scrape it off. Yeah. yeah. And now go for it. No. No, I like it better without the syrup. Well, that's I okay. I think it's great without the syrup. I think the level of spice is good. Yeah. Is it normally this spicy? Yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit spicier, to be honest. And you moved over here mm-hmm. recently. What mm-hmm. do you miss most about Irish food? Mm, I really miss spice bags. This is actually quite emotional for me because I haven't mm. had a spice bag in a very long time and I fucking love them so much. I don't know why we don't have it here. Mm. Really difficult to find. Really... The Chinese restaurants in the UK are too authentic. There's no... Yeah. Like, I need them to be a bit shit in order to really um, experience true joy. So your Irish and Scottish Chinese restaurants are the same because all the sauces are like... They they are like this. Mm -hmm. Really, really sugary. Mm -hmm. Did you say something about these chips? Uh, Ideally, a spice bag should make you shit yourself. Yeah. Because you've said um, this is really healthy and lovely, though, so that won't happen. Yeah, it was made. It was made up the stairs by one of the lovely production team. But you mm. said to the producer that you've got a lot of stories about shitting yourself. I really empathise with this. Um, I have too many, uh, but you wouldn't say what they were on the phone. Do you know what's so disturbing and actually terrifying to me? I've just realised that since I said that, I've shit myself again. 
Oh dear. So in the interim she, period, she's not, she needs to leave. Like right now, <laughs> in the interim period between having that conversation with your producer and now I've actually shit myself again. Oh my god, you should do a song about it. Uh, You've not have done any songs about it. I just feel like Leonard Cohen wrote write a song about shitting himself. So maybe that's <laughs> the one. That, maybe that's where my yeah. But you're but like you're you're. A lot of what you're doing is what I don't feel like anyone's done it before. Your songs are very humorous, but also poignant. Imagine at Glastonbury when you finally get the, like the main stage at Glastonbury. It's not far off, and you sing that. That's going to be the one that brings everyone together. Mm. I had a terrible time in Belfast once where I nearly wasn't allowed to board the plane because I was pooing and being sick so much, um, and I pooed so hard in my hotel. Basically, I like nearly flew off the toilet from the force of pooing. And I think it was because I had a a really bad sausage roll in Belfast train station. It was mm-hmm. like a poisoned one from a food stall. Um, and I flew off the toilet and then I spewed at the smell of the poo. And I spewed so hard that um, my bra, which I'd been trying to get on so I could make my flight, it flew off my body. And then I tried to put deodorant on and the deodorant made me puke. And then the <laughs> sight of the puke made me poo again. Have you had anything that bad? Yeah. How, can you tell me? I'm trying to think. I almost shit myself in front of Jason Donovan, but then I didn't. Was that on loose ends? That was. Because you were on it with my friend the other was, day. yeah. And he, Philly, my, Philly, Wang, Wang. Uh, yeah, Philly, Wang, Wang. He said to me that he was moved to tears at the performance of um, <laughs> Where Are Your Kids Tonight? Yeah. And it, it's now awful to know that the whole time you just had, maybe had a poo coming out your butt. It was definitely one of my more passionate performances. But <laughs> what? I was really, I was so ill that I was really thinking about the song. I was like, wow, is it? I can't believe this is my life. Like, I can't believe I might sh myself in front of f-ing Jason Donovan. Um, oh. So basically, the way that that show works, that radio show, they bring everyone in and then you all have to sit there watching and listening to each other. Yeah. And as I said, I did actually legitimately sh- myself the day before that show recorded. So I was like, I'd had a really bad phone call with someone and had a really stressful couple of days, was kind of fighting with a lot of people. And then... I went to call him. He's my keyboard player slash housemate slash. Um, uh, Is life. that the bearded guy that's yeah. in the videos? Yeah. Oh, life, cool. Life partner, keyboard player, housemate, my best friend. F- love that guy. Uh, but I kind of turned to him. I was like, right, I need to go for a hike because I love a bit of a hike. I love hiking at the moment. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. Right. I just like stomp it out. So I was like, I need to go for a hike. Let's go. So I put my exercise clothes on to like, because I. Obviously, it was like all lamped up because I was stressed and angry yeah. and annoyed. And I was like stomping it out. And literally five minutes after we left the house, I was just walking, 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 walking. And then this is what happened. My <laughs> ass is in, right? So like I had no control over it. It wasn't, you know, and usually you <laughs> if you get like, um, there's like some precursor. To the listeners that aren't uh, watching this, um, CMAT just uh, made a fist and then quickly opened and closed the fist as a <laughs> representation of her. Um. That, is, that is literally what happened. So I was just walking along. There was no preamble. There was no stabbing pains. There was nothing like that, right? Mm-hmm. I was just walking and then I just quickly turned to Colm and was like, Colm, I've sh- myself. And he was like, oh, okay. And he was so lovely because we love him. And he luckily was gone for a swim afterwards. Mm-hmm. So he had a towel. So he just wrapped a towel around myself and we just walked back home. Oh, that was nice of him. <laughs> yeah, so in, in all the scenarios in which I sh- myself before, I have to say that's probably one of the better ones and was like really, really nice. I can't believe you told him because I would always keep it really quiet until like I need to wait for months until after it's happened before I can tell anyone. I'll be perfectly honest with you. There was no hiding it. Right, okay, was, oh dear. It was Armageddon. But I almost then, literally the day after, I was still not well, went in to record Loose Ends and they do this thing where they're like, yeah, so the structure of the show is everyone gets to talk and, you know, everybody yeah. everybody just gets to do their bit and you, we're all going <laughs> to sit around and listen and, you know, applaud if anyone says something funny and laugh. Don't, don't be afraid to laugh. Don't it's be afraid to applaud. like I'm on Loose Ends right now. This is so similar. Yeah, all this, right? And then they kind of closed the door. And the minute that she closed the door, and you're essentially locked in. You're not actually physically locked in. Mm. Shout out to BBC for not imprisoning people. <laughs> but it was 45 minutes before they called me for my bit. So I was just sitting there the whole time, 
Like, I'm sure Philly Philly Wang Wang was saying something funny. I'm sure Sarah Pascoe was saying something funny. I couldn't, they were not <laughs> speaking English. I no. couldn't understand a single, there was not a single word going in because I just was like, don't sh yourself, don't sh yourself, don't sh yourself. Please don't sh yourself for today's Donovan, who I love, when he ended up the air. Eventually did my bit, stood up to play the guitar, played it, was like holding on for dear life, was actually genuinely emotional at the fact that I was like, oh my God, I can't believe my life has led me to a position where me singing my stupid f***ing songs about my stupid f***ing life has put me in a position where I might sh myself in the BBC in front of Jason Donovan. I will. <laughs> I can't even move back to Dumboyne. I'll have to go somewhere else where no one knows me and live in a cave for the rest of my life. <laughs> but then the minute I was done, I like legged it out the door. And Phil was like, oh, I thought that's just because you were like so overcome with emotion. And I was like, well, a little bit. So that's one of my sh myself stories. That's actually two. That's actually almost Yeah, that was two. Thank you. You're that welcome. was amazing. Seema, I just need to rate your wild combo. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it 100 chips out of 100. It was great. We are back. Now, Seema, it's time for the Twisted Combo. And that's a meal that's been designed by the Twisted Food Scientists. It's a combination of foods that have been very lovingly put together by the Twisted Food Boffins. And you'll either love it or hate it. Are you ready to see what it is? What the f*** is that? Oh, no, I'm no, no, no. This looks no. like... um. There's no way. It looks and smells like banana on pizza that. and there's melted cheese over the top of it. So, if, you know the scientist <laughs> thing? That's a lie. Um, <laughs> but they, they made me say that. <laughs> no, because um, clearly a scientist didn't make this. A f psychopath did. Uh, yeah, it's hard because they want me to not say every week that the food they've given me is disgusting, but like it, is, it, it really is like trying to push me to my limits. So apparently this is a delicacy in Sweden. Now, quite unusually, I've just come back from Sweden last night. I didn't have this at all. I didn't see this at all. And I always eat food when I go to different countries. I try and eat local delicacies. I had a lot of nice cinnamon buns. I didn't see this in any of the bakeries. So I, I've... I... <laughs> Hey, remember when we said earlier that you pride yourself on being able to eat anything? <laughs> so I have, I have some, I have some, I'm, I'm going to just, I need to just work myself up before I start eating it, right? Because there is a company in Cumbria, yeah. in the Lake District, that makes a banana chutney that is one of the most delicious things. It's like a really spicy banana paste that you can put onto any savoury um, food ever and it's absolutely delicious. The, right? the whole family of chutneys and savoury jams can f*** off. Like, I hate it. I hate it so much. If it was called banana jam and it was sweet, I'd be okay with it, but I don't like chutneys. Uh, it's... Ugh. I love a chutney. Nah, I love it. Nah, nah. I love a chutney. Also, I'm a lover of the plantain. I was just thinking of plantains. Right. Why don't we pretend this is plantain? I think I'm going to have to pretend that it's plantain because I look because plantain and pizza, I'd be on board with. To be honest with you, yeah, that'd be a good combo. Mm. Couldn't do that now. Bastards! It's so confusing because I love bananas, but I don't want to taste it on a pizza. Hey, don't you think this would be better if you were able to cook it in your own home pizza oven in the oh. garden? Oh. And post about it on Instagram. If only someone out there. And things Welcome. aren't the same for pop stars these days. They don't make the same money that they used to. They mm -hmm. can't afford a high quality pizza oven. No, I don't make any money. I spend it all on stupid costumes all of the time. <laughs> and all of my management and people that work on my team are always giving it to me and are like... Gary, you spend all of your budget on costumes and clothing. You need to stop. It's actually not well. And I'm like, shut up. I'm eating a banana on a pizza for absolutely no reason right now. Your costumes are amazing. Another thing um, that I like is you have like a signature face that you do in your music videos that isn't dissimilar to the face that I make a lot of the time when I'm having to eat this stuff on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You do like a very cartoonish face. Was that a deliberate choice? Sorry, is this news to you? You do it in all the videos. I didn't know I did it based on all the videos. <laughs> I feel really embarrassed. You're like, then. you look like an ugly cartoon. You look no, like a ugly cartoon. How did I say ugly cartoon? I didn't say that. You do a cartoonish fit. 
Right. You I'm look not... like a big. Ma- you look like Daffy Duck, girl. You're like you look like fucking girl. No, do you not know what I mean? No, you're I don't. Know. Obviously, you're a good looking. What I mean is, in your music videos, you do like a face that's like, like that. I've it's like a jokey, like a jokey face. Like yeah, that. like that. Yeah, like that. Oh yeah. I mean, I didn't know that. I I actually wasn't conscious of the fact that I did that. I just. Probably okay. make that face all the time. Sorry, I was really proud of myself that I full, noticed that thought. I- full disclosure, I have gotten a little bit of Botox recently, so I'm probably not able to do it the same. But I am <laughs> able to I am able to do this cool new face that we discovered the other day, right? Because I got it I got it in two locations, right? I got it here and here. Yeah. Because I have like a Neanderthal esque uh brow line that is hereditary in my family. And so I wanted just to like lift it up a little bit. So I just got it here and I got it here, right? Uh, she's pointing to her forehead and temples. My forehead and my, my my crow's feet, actually, my forehead and my crow's feet. But what I discovered I can do is like isolate, <laughs> isolate these parts of my eyebrows and then bring this one down so I can kind of do like a. Oh, yeah, I can see you've had Botox now. Uh, see, what's finished almost all of her banana pizza. I told you. I told you. I told you. I pride myself on eating anything. And to be fair, it initially I was horrified, but I learned to love it. You folded it over, which might help. Did you like it? Or was it more just you didn't notice you were eating no, it? No, that when I folded it over, the texture of the banana became less of an issue because it blended into the tomato sauce. And then I was thinking of that banana chutney and I was kind of fine and with it. that helped. Yeah. See, what I was thinking of that was it was supposed to help me is um, I had a family friend at a pizza restaurant and he used to make for dessert mm-hmm. a banana pizza but instead of a tomato base, it was uh, Nutella with bananas on top. That's cool. And then something else, like, sweet on that. Mm. But because I was thinking of that, that made it worse and mm-hmm. tasted, there's, like, melted cheese on my banana. Yeah. And I just wasn't up for it. But you did great. You f- finished the whole thing. That's I don't, I don't do. I'll eat anything. I have the famine gene. Uh, tell me about your new album, Crazy Mad for Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It's very difficult to um, talk about my trauma when I've just eaten a banana pizza. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. Is no. it sad? Well, the song that I've been listening to loads, I like it because it's very sad. Uh, why? Have, well, I've listened to it loads and I keep forgetting the f-ing title. Fake fan. No, I'm not fake because you. It mu- there must be proof when I get my Spotify unwrapped, I'll show you and you'll be like, she did listen to it all the time. So yeah, stay, stay for, for something. something. Yeah. Would you say this dish... <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say this. They want me to ask if this dish is good crack or bad crack. Does it make you say <laughs> thanks a million or is it pure clem? What's clem? What's clem? He says it's an Irish word for bad. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh. English producers I see it oh no diddly eye diddly eye yeah (laughs) I see it I see you you're like just making up some random squiggly down words you just let me tell you that's an Irish saying 800 years and now this do you like this (laughs) I wouldn't say I liked it I would say that I ate it you didn't eat it mindfully. That was I maybe the trick. I don't do that. But that's how you managed to get through it. I was thinking about it too much. Look, I hardly had any of it. Anyway, that's yes. it from me and Seema this week. Thank you so much for coming on the show. A lifelong dream come true. You should all go and listen to Seema, watch her videos, follow her, buy her merch, go and see her on tour. She's an incredible live performer on the cusp of being a star. Thank you and goodbye to everyone who sells pizza ovens. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. (laughs) 